So yesterday was interesting to say the least. We were able to utilize a few of the dynamics that we have already discussed in our futures trading to take advantage of yesterday's market. So you've now been informed on how to work with setting the candle set up, how to work with that simple moving average um, indicator set and trading strategy that I discussed beforehand. We mentioned news catalyst and being prepared for them and then being able to use secondary and tertiary markets to make a distinguishing uh, trade on whatever asset we're looking at. What are we going to get into now? The risk management aspect of things. So I'm going to show you two different types of risk management. I'm going to show you one that uses standard candles and that uses your standard ideology around things. And then I'm going to introduce you into what is known as Renko. We'll get into that here in a minute. Both of these styles are going to allow you to define your risk management for a trade in a hard set manner. Now why your entry and exit may be a little bit dynamic, do keep in mind that when you are setting your risk management, that has to be static. It is what it is, and you have to work with it. No hoping that a trade's going to come back for you. No saying, oh, it's going to be different this time. If you put in some risk parameters there, you have to stick to them. So let's go ahead and get into that. I'm going to readjust my chart here real quick so it looks like what yours should be looking like. There we go. Now we're going to add those moving averages. Add two of them. Remember we discussed putting in 8 and a 20. And you should have it whatever color you so desire. Do blue and do pinkish purple. See it a little bit easier. Adding our ATR. Now I'm going to use my ATR label, but you can use a label or you can utilize the um, blower indicator. As long as it's on a 14 day, you're good. Alrighty, 8, 20, 14, and you'll see I do not have volume at the bottom of my chart. Uh, I was asked the question, how do you remove from showing bottom, or showing volume at the bottom of your chart? Uh, let me see if I can remember how to do it here on Thinkorswim. It was... Oh. Uh, go to either equities, options, or futures. Since we're discussing futures, you go to futures, and it's going to be show volume subgraph. If you click on it, it'll show it up. If you deselect it, disappears. Good stuff. Okay. Alrighty, so we have our ATR label. The blue right here is my fast moving, the pink is my slow moving. Okay. So we have an 8 and a 20. Now, as far as our risk management aspect of things, I'm going to be using this extra space here to be able to type and to draw. So just keep in mind that uh, I am not an artist by any means, but we're going to be using this area here so you can see things. Alrighty, so using the Heikinashi candles, we can see that we have a flat area right in here before we had the conversion, and the same is true here. So we have a small channel that we're working with top of the channel, bottom of the channel. Again, I utilize orange for support and red for resistance. You can pick your own color sets. There we go. So now I have my channel. I see my current price is 367.50 here. Oh, yep, yeah, that works. With that being the case, I can see that okay. If we maintain support here, I see that my next macro area that I'm going to be working with is this 369.5 right here. We're, set <clears throat> we're setting up for the pierce, test, and then a run. 
Now I need to make a distinguishing factor of where I want to enter this trade. What is my trigger point when it comes into this? A trigger point is going to be different for everybody depending on your amount of risk tolerance. We're going to make it pretty simple for now and say that when we have a printing candle above the 20 EMA and the 8 is crossing, I will enter my trade on the start of the next candle. Now, we're going to use some hypothetical numbers with, the ju with this just to kind of make, make things a little bit easier. So let's say that we get that cross in the next candle, okay? We have this candle revert, it prints higher up here, this candle closes, and we decide to enter the trade at 36.85. Let's use that number just to make things easier. So, I do recommend writing out what you're going to do. I'm going to do it on the chart. You can do it on a piece of paper. It's entirely up to you. So, if and only if I see a candle print above 20, oops, 20 EMA and the 8 EMA is crossing the 20, I will enter my trade with 5 MES contracts, and that is micro ES, MES, micro ES. Now, we get into the risk aspect of things. I am willing to allow this trade to go against me by an ATR. So I plan on this being a short-term run trade right through here on a five-minute chart. We see that our ATR is about eight almost about nine. We're sitting at about nine points every five minutes, okay? Now, that average ATR, think of being in a fight. If you know the person that you are fighting has a two-foot swing, we do not want to be within that two feet. But if we're five feet out on this thing, we're never going to be able to work with our target there. So we want to be just outside of this range or that swing. I like to utilize 1.3 times the ATR. Go ahead and open up your computer's calculator. That way you can make sure you get a roundabout idea of where you're going to be at with this. And we have about a $9 ATR. So 9 times 1.30 is going to give us 11.7 points or 11 and 3 quarter. Now I did go a little bit higher to the 9 so I'm gonna say this is 11 and a half. That gives us just outside of that range. So 11 and a half points against me is what I have to be willing to allow this position to do. So I type in I am willing to allow this trade to go against me by 1.3 times ATR 11.5 points. You may go, God, that sounds like a lot of points. That's a lot of money. This is where the scaling aspect of things. Now, I'm going to type this out. You do not have to type this out every time you do it, but the first couple times I would say write it out or something of that nature. I know that I can allocate, let's say, $500 to this trade. Okay, If I can allocate up to $500 on this trade, then I am willing to lose that whole $500. Okay, Remember, with my particular risk management strategies, Whatever my total allocation is, that is what I have the ability to lose. Now, yes, I will typically clear the position before I get into that, 
but you want to make sure that you're keeping a close eye on what's going on. You are able to lose that whole position. So we know that on the micro ES, every point we move is going to be $5. We see that we have 11.5 points that we're able to move. So 11 and a half ticks. All right, back to the calculator. So if we know that 11.5 times 5 is going to give us $57.50. Well, I can only have a total loss of 500. Okay? We can then do 500 divided by 57.5, and that gives us 8.6, or 8 contracts. Okay? You are able to play at least eight contracts with that so i said that i would have five right in here awesome so i have a maximum of eight but because of what is going on i'm just going to play five contracts in there now no that does not mean i can allow this to go a little bit more when it hits 11 and a half points you're out of the trade why because it has gone 30 percent above what the average movement has been. If that occurs, your idea is wrong. You're looking for a bullish trade. It has gone down not only the ATR, but 30% more than the ATR. You are wrong on the trade. Just get out of it. So, I know that I can allocate $500 for total loss which would be eight contracts okay so now I have it all written out I know that I can allocate at least five hundred dollars for total loss which would be eight contracts okay we're only gonna get into this with five contracts I am only going to use five contracts alrighty now what about your profit when are you gonna know when to take profit the ATR comes into the aspect of that as well so what would be let's say once again we're getting in at 3685 so 11 and a half points up so 3685 plus 11.5 is gonna give me 3696 okay 36.96 is going to be just above our red line right up here. All right, that's fine. That's perfectly. If you want to use a full ATR, that's great. I would get out right at that high, which is 36.90, about 36.94. So I will take profit at 36.94. Just doing an arbitrary number here. I will take profit at $36.94. Alrighty. Now, because we know that our trading strategy here has a higher than 50% uh, win ratio, the strategy I'm showing you, I've backtested it for years, and even on people that are brand spanking new, as long as they maintain some sense of risk management and control, the strategy has a minimum of 68% win rate on this. Um, now, the times that people have messed up this trade, it's because of the risk management. So the trade still worked out as long as they, they kept an idea of what was going on. It was the fact they didn't cut risk is what ended up blowing the position up. Okay, so I will take profit at 3694 that is slightly in from the ATR and slightly in from where our resisting structure is right here. Remember, when we run these positions, we're running from the break, and then we're looking to close those trades before everybody else is closing that because we want to maintain that liquidity. 
Now we'll get into some more advanced concepts on letting that position run further, but for right now, it's a targeted entry and a targeted exit. Okay, so let's go ahead and review what we have going on. If and only if I see a candle print above the 20 EMA and the 8 EMA is crossing the 20, I will enter my trade with 5 MES contracts. I am willing to allow this trade to go against me by 1.3 ATR or 11.5 points. I know that I can allocate $500, put cash symbol in there, for total loss, which would be eight contracts. Okay. Let me let me elaborate on that a little more. Which would be eight contracts for total ATR run loss. I am only going to use five contracts. I will take profit at 3694. All right, so I've identified why I'm getting in, why I'm getting out, where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out, and how much I'm using. Oh. As this is, so I will take profit 3694 as this is our next business zone there we go so now I've identified everything I need to do I hit OK there's my entire trade thesis right here and several 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 different platforms you're able to do this if you write it and stick it right on the chart there it is it's right there you cannot ignore it because you got this big wall of text looking at you and it lays everything out if and only if I see a candle print above 20 EMA. Okay, well, I'm sitting here waiting on them, see what they're going to do. We did not print above it. You go, oh, man, it didn't print above it. Okay, cool. Just wait for your next one. We're starting to form another pattern here. So we saw price action coming up. We laid out a thesis. Okay, the ATRs and everything are still maintaining the same. So now you can just change to another thesis up here. Well, this did not work out, but I know for a fact we're coming down to another business zone right here. Price came down, they made a decision, they pushed their way back up. So the lower section of these wicks is 36.60. So now I can come in and edit that thesis, something along the lines of, if and only if I see a reversion candle off of this lower business zone I will get long with the same metrics here five contracts and I will take profit at the next business zone that would so if we're down here the next business zone would actually be up here at 36 uh, we'll call it 3675 for easy numbers so you're looking at approximately a 15 point move up on that aspect of things so it actually exceeds the ATR remember a business zone will hold more weight than a standard ATR so if your ATR is 11 and a half points then designate that okay I'm gonna take profit 11 and a half points or you say I'm gonna take profit at the next business zone whatever you decide that is what you need to stick to okay Alrighty, so that covers that aspect of things when it comes to the risk metrics. Oops, I don't want to edit that. I just kind of want to move it around a little bit. So we're going to move that over here. Alrighty, so now that we've covered the idea of what is my risk within the trade, how do we use Renko to figure this out? Well, I'm glad you asked, Sally. <laughs> Alrighty, so we defined right here what our risk metric was off of these candles. I'm now going to introduce you into something known as Renko. Renko is a defined candle. We're going to go over here to our settings. We're going to come over here to time axis. Okay. Our aggregation type is going to be range and we're going to go down here and we're going to go to Renko bars. 
we're then going to take those Renko bars and we're going to adjust them. Now, here's the interesting part about this is you can adjust these by tick, by ATR, uh, and what's going to happen is as long as we we print above whatever that defined range is, then that bar will close. So if I set this up and I state that my risk is 11 and a half points, okay, 11 and a half points, and depending on what market you're trading with, that's how you'll define the ticks within there. So for the ES or the NQ, we know it moves in quarter ticks. So 11 point five times well, hold on I'm gonna so it'd be 44 45 46 so 44 so 11 times 4 44 plus 2 so we have 46 ticks is our maximum okay that 46 ticks and we're gonna have a time interval of one day even though that it really kind of pulls time out of the equation here it's going to take it a moment here to adjust to everything. Okay. So, what we now have, and you can change the color on these to whatever you so desire. I'm going to move our thesis over. Oops. Okay, I'll move it over there. As we are working through here, you see that I only have these bars. The only reason you will get a new bar up here, so this bar will continue to go down here, once we have a reversion of 11 and a half ticks and we get our next bar up here, that is going to be your, your movement. We have moved one ATR. Whatever you define as your risk, you're able to state, okay, I am going to stay within this trade as long as we continue to have this movement up. Once I see a red bar print, then I am out of my trade. I know this is a very, very, very different way for you to look at the market, but you are actually absolutely defining what your specific risk metrics are and what your account can handle. So you do not get wicked out. You do not get washed out. Renko uses specifically just price. You designate when price is out of this range, I am going to take that position for as long as that trend continues because that trend, that price will continue, and once it reverts, then you get another candle. It's essentially Heikinashi candles without the volume. It is strictly just price, nothing else, no other misnomers, nothing like that. And you can see how clearly defined these trends are. Now, many, many, many Renko traders use a two-bar metric. So what happens is they go, okay, we have a trend going. When I have two bars print, then I am into my trade. Why two bars? Because we have a recursion and then a confirmation of price. And they typically get in on the, um, the end of that second bar there and will run it whatever position they need to. This is used a lot on oil. So we know for a fact that oil is going to be moving at 0.57, okay, ticks every five minutes, give or take. With that being the, and you can see right up here, 46 ticks is 46 cent right there. I can adjust that tick to meet that ATR. So I come over here. I once again go over to time axis and I go, okay. I see my ATR is 57, 1.3 times 57. Let's call it 75, just to make life easy. Okay, 
So now I have the ATR applied through here that every 75 cent I'll get a move. So if that is what you want to use, there you go. You can use 10 cent, you can use 50 cent, you can use whatever you so desire to make it worthwhile and work with your specific risk metric. You can quickly change it over to utilize 10 cent. Let's say you only want to go for 10 cent movements. Cool. You're speeding things up now. You're able to see a little bit through here and go, okay, well, I'm in on the second bar. I'm out on the red candle. Boom. So you would have taken that move from 112 and call it 75, and you would have cleared the trade at 113.27. Now, right now, we have a candle forming, or we have a bar forming. It's not a candle. It's a bar. Words are important. It is starting to form. So if we get two of them here, then we take that trade up, and we see how price has actually reversed right at the top. So I designate the idea. Okay, if and only if I see two bars print, I will enter my trade with 10 mini oil contracts and take that position up to the top of these Renko bars here, or 113.90, 113.89, whatever suits your fancy there. I will exit my trade. I am willing to allow this to go against me by the ATR, okay, or by one bar. I'm willing to let this allow this to go against me by one bar by two bars, whatever works for your risk metric. Alrighty, so that covers risk management both on a time-based candle and on a Renko-based candle. Um, I like Renko charts for newer traders because it forces you to define your specific risk metric. It forces you to define, okay, I am wanting to do X, Y, Z because of XYZ, and I'm going to clear my position at ABC. Um, if you are unable to bring a thesis together, you whether you like it or not, and these are harsh words, but whether you like it or not, you are not ready to put live money onto the market. You need to be able to articulate whatever you're doing. And to be frank, if you're too lazy to do that, you don't deserve to be in the market. There is a certain amount of work you have to do within the markets to be able to put together an idea and then run with that idea and allow it to come to fruition. At the end of the day, as long as you are 55% on your trading strategy and you maintain that movement, you're going to come out ahead in the markets. But you have to be willing to stick to that strict risk management. Both of these things that I've shown you will allow you to do that. So if you were following that Renko aspect there, you would have entered down here at the 113, let's just call it 113.58. You'd already be up 12, 12 cent on your position here, and you'd just keep working it right through there. More than likely, it's going to push a little bit higher up into here and then roll over. Um, okay, so other than that, that pretty much clears everything. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to comment in the comment section below. Find me in the scalp pit. Uh, hit me up on social medias and share this info with your friends and family. Uh, look, I, I try to bring things down to the easiest way that I can, but there is some verbiage you do have to understand within the market. Uh, make sure to check out the other videos we have here on money.net to kind of get an idea behind all of that verbiage. Uh, and then ask me if you do not understand anything. I am more than happy to do the best I can to articulate in a different way. But we're going to be um, looking at the full Monty on Friday. We're going to put everything together and we're going to execute some trades and go from there. And then next week uh, we'll be working in a couple different markets and getting you prepared to go, okay, well, we have all of this. It's a fresh week. I've got all that information. Let's start implementing it. With that being said, I do believe that clears everything. So, as always, remember, your trades are in the history, and I'll see you around. Stay green, peeps.